This anatomic specimen of the left posterior two-thirds of one half of a skull base will show the soft tissue disappear, giving an excellent view of the cartilaginous ear. The lateral plate of the tragus can easily be seen as an appendage of the concha bowl, and the cartilaginous pointer can also be seen nestled in the tympanomastoid suture. The digastric groove is seen entering uh, in an anterior direction uh, from right to left and the stylomastoid foramen can easily be seen just posterior to the styloid process. The jugular bulb can be seen as can the carotid canal. The Cartilaginous pointer is nestled in the tympanomastoid suture. In this specimen, the main trunk of the facial nerve descends 13 millimeters before turning anterior, in an anterior direction for 6 millimeters to the anterior edge of the pes anserinus. Only the superior division nerves are seen. The specimen can be turned and the tympanic membrane can be seen in green. We will now see the middle fossa and posterior fossa surfaces of the temporal bone. The cisternal segment of the facial nerve can be seen entering the internal auditory canal, as can the endolymphatic sac on the posterior fossa surface. The transparency allows us to see the mastoid air cells, the vertical segment of the facial nerve, and the digastric ridge from inside the mastoid. The corda tympani nerve can be seen exiting at two and a half millimeters superior to the stylomastoid foramen. We now turn to see the facial recess where the corda tympani nerve is an average distance of 2.5 millimeters from the facial nerve at the second genu. This allows a safe working uh, area for a two millimeter diamond burr in the facial recess. The stapes and incus can easily be seen sighting along the posterior wall of the external auditory canal we can see the stapedius muscle and tendon. As we make measurements from the tympanic annulus to the facial nerve, we find that the most proximate relationship of these two structures is at the four o'clock position of the tympanic membrane, where only 2.7 millimeters separates the vertical segment of the facial nerve and the anterior tympanic annulus. When we sight along the plane created by the tympanic annulus, we can see that the vertical segment of the facial nerve ascends laterally and breaks the plane of the tympanic membrane at the six o'clock position. This is a good guide for takedown of the facial ridge in tympanomastoid surgery. The specimen is now in the anatomic position. The bone is returned and recesses in the posterior tympanum, such as the sinus tympani, and in the hypotympanum can be seen. Disease in these areas can be marsupialized safely by removing bone along the posterior annulus. As the tympanic membrane becomes transparent, we can see the corda tympani nerve passing lateral to the long process of the incus and medial to the neck of the malleus. At the malleus, the corda tympani nerve passes just superior to the insertion of the tensor tympani tendon in all cases. Care must be exercised when removing the malleus head not to inadvertently transect the corda tympani nerve. The stapes foot plate occupies the middle one third of the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. The dural envelope is clearly seen. The specimen is moved to the upright position and structures are removed to reveal the dural envelope of the internal auditory canal. 
This shows the facial nerve exiting into the fallopian canal from the anterior superior quadrant of the IAC. The large opening for the, co for the cochlear nerve is seen. The nervous intermedius is seen coursing along the inferior posterior portion of the cisternal trunk. The eighth nerve is added. The labyrinthine artery can be seen exiting from ICA.